Hello, in this lecture we're going to work a problem that will liquidate a partnership, close up a partnership, and distribute the assets and pay off the liabilities. We have looked at a problem in a previous video where we had a liquidation process where we sold the inventory at a gain up here in part one. Part two will now sell the inventory at a loss. So the process will be much the same. However, now instead of selling the inventory, the inventory here at a gain, we're gonna sell it at a loss. It's on the books at 530. And we're gonna sell it for 450. We're gonna put this information into two formats, one being a worksheet format such as this, where we can see our accounts in a worksheet. We can see our capital accounts in a worksheet. We're also gonna record it in terms of a journal entry. So we're gonna record the journal entry in this area here and we will post that to the trial balance to see what happens in terms of a trial balance so here's going to be the trial balance over here and then we have our accounting equation of assets equal liabilities and owner's equity so in our trial balance we're going to have assets the only two assets being cash and inventory we've got the payable being the liability and credits are going to be represented with brackets in this worksheet and then we have our capital accounts. We've got the three capital accounts here. We don't have any net income at the time or expenses because those have been closed out to the balance sheet. And that's the process that needs to happen before we can then close out the company, liquidate the company. Now the order of liquidation will be that we want to first sell the assets. The only asset we have is going to be represented by inventory. That's going to represent all assets. If we had a larger company with obviously more assets, larger partnership with more assets, we're going to sell the inventory. Then we're going to see whatever gain or loss we have. In this case, we'll have a loss and we're going to recognize that as a gain or loss. We will then allocate that gain or loss to the capital accounts in accordance with their profit sharing, which we'll put over here. Then we'll pay off the payable accounts. We're gonna pay off this liability. Again, all uh, liabilities we should pay off. We're just gonna represent all liabilities with one liability, in this case being accounts payable. Then we'll be left with just cash and the capital accounts, and we can pay off the partners in that way. Why do we need to do it in this, in this order? And the reason is, well, what if, for example, C here asked for the money right away, so C says, Hey, I'm a partner, the partnership is closing. I have a capital account balance of 212. Why don't you just pay that now, 2125? And, or pay me what you can. Notice we don't have the cash. We've, we've only got 182.5. And if we gave C 182.5 and say, okay, here you go, that's fine because we have inventory that we're gonna sell here. What if we don't sell the inventory for 530? What if we sell it for less? We then have a problem with the other two partners uh, saying that, well, now you, <laughs> The money has been given away already to one partner and uh, we, we have a loss. Therefore, we want to first sell the inventory, then pay off the liabilities, and then allocate the uh, cash to the partners at the end of the process to make sure it works out as fairly as possible. So we're going to do this in two different ways. We're going to say that first we have these uh, partners sharing the partnership at a 3 to 1 ratio with KCM respectively. So what does that mean? What does the 3 to 1 mean? And uh, note that if we, the simplest way to think of a partnership is if we have two partners and we say, well, we, sh we split it 50-50, 50%, 50%. Why do we have to represent this in a ratio? Why don't we represent it in percentages? Sometimes the uh, percent is not precise. And so sometimes we have a situation where the ratio is more precise. This is one of those situations. Therefore, uh, the ratio is actually more precise than uh, percentage allocation. So how would we then convert this to a percent? Well, let's think about that. We're gonna put it into a percent in Excel. We're gonna put K here. K has three out of the three, two, one, or six. Therefore, it's gonna be equals three uh, divided by, and I'm gonna put brackets and list those, divided by three plus two plus one brackets. So we're gonna, we're gonna put the division problem three over six. And we're gonna represent it in this format to show uh, the whole information equals to make a formula three divided by which is of course the slash brackets because we need the order of operations being adding before division and then we're going to have three plus two plus one that's three divided by six which is 50 or 50 percent if we want to convert that to a percent then we can go to the home tab we can go to the numbers group and we can go to percentage and there's the 50 percent then let's do the same thing for C, who has two out of the six. So we're gonna go to C, same thing, we're gonna say equals, 
then I'm going to say 2 divided by slash brackets. We're going to say the 3 plus the 2 plus the 1. Yes, we could just type 6, but we're just going to put the whole thing in there. And then we're going to say enter, and we come up to 0.33. And if we want to see a percent, home tab, numbers group, percentage. Now note that that percent is not actually 0.33%. It's actually, if we go to the home tab, numbers and increase decimals, like so, it goes on forever. It's 33.33333 on forever. That's why the ratio is more precise than the percent. Note that even though we are reporting it as a percent in Excel, in the cell, that's what it looks like. It looks like 33, and if I bring it back down, I'm going to bring it down to just 2. Then at 33.33. But if we use that cell in a calculation, it is really a ratio, because what's really in there is 2 over 6. So keep that in mind. I'll point that out as we go. I'm going to add a couple spaces to all of these to make them equal, so we can see a little bit more of what the actual uh, number is. So I'm going to add a couple decimals. That's 50. Obviously, there's zeros after that. There, that's an even one. We're going to do the same thing for M, which has 1 over 6. So we're going to say this equals 1 divided by slash brackets for order of operations, 3 plus 2 plus 1, and brackets. So 1 over 6 would be 0.17. If we make that a percent, home tab, numbers, percent. Oop, I'm in the wrong cell. I'm in the wrong cell. Undo. <laughs> We're going to be on this cell, and then I'm going to go home tab, numbers, percent. And it's not really 17, however, because if I go to the home tab, numbers, increase decimals, it's really 16.67, right? So, or it's really 666 on forever. And so we're going to leave it at 16.67 uh, and recognize the fact that that is not uh, the whole number. It's really one sixth or 16.666 on forever. All right, so keep that in mind anytime we have an issue like that. If the number comes out, if we have a rounding issue, it's probably due to, or it could be due to, uh, the rounding of Excel using uh, the, the, the rounding function. Okay, so now we're gonna go down here and we are going to sell the inventory. So we're selling this inventory for cash. So we got 450. If we see this in terms of a table, we'll do it in terms of a table first, then we'll do it in terms of the trial balance. So we're gonna receive 450, so cash is gonna go up by 450, like so, and we're going to take the inventory off the books, the inventory is on the books at 530. So we're gonna do a subtraction, so I'm gonna take a negative 530, like so, and then we have, we have this difference here, meaning the inventory is greater than the cash we got for it. We lost money and we lost 80,000. So that 80,000 then is going to have to be eaten. It's going to have to be allocated by the, to the partners. We're going to have to reduce their partnership balances by the loss that we have there. So we could do that. What we're going to do is we're going to take that 80 and multiply it times their profit percentages. So I can do that in this way. I'm going to say this equals the sum of the 450 and the 5 brackets. The 450 and the 5 is a negative 80 because uh, it's a loss. And then we're going to say times, and I'm going to point to that 50% and enter. So let me do that with a calculator. This is the formula that we're using. Obviously, what we did here is that we took the... Uh, 450,000 minus the 530,000, we have an $80,000 loss that we're going to allocate to K based on the profit percent of 50% times 0.5. That's how we're coming up with this negative 40. Let's do the same thing for C. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to say this equals the sum of this and this, which is a negative 80 brackets times their profit percent for C, which is 33.333, and enter. So once again, you can see the formula here. Let's do it with a calculator now. And we're going to say that this then is the 530,000. Uh, I'm sorry, let's do the cash first. So we come up with a loss. It's 450,000 minus the 530,000. We lost 80,000. We're going to allocate to C 33.33 or times 0.3333 if we put it into decimal format 
and that comes up with 26.664. Why is that slightly different than the 26.667 over here? Because over here, this is actually a more accurate number in Excel. It's more accurate because we're using the cell reference of this cell to do the calculation and even though that cell says 33.33 percent it's really two sixths which is 33.33333 on forever so keep that in mind when when you're working with excel that's that's a distinction that could kind of drive you a little crazy so if you don't see what's happening there so we're gonna do the same thing here and for h uh in h 27 for partner m equals the sum of we're going to highlight these two cells again, brackets, times, and I'm going to point to that 16.67 and enter. Once again, this is the formula. If we did that in the calculator, all we're doing is the 450,000 minus the 530,000. That's a negative 80,000 times. If we make this a decimal, 0.1667 and enter. Once again, 13336 slightly different than the 13333 we calculated over here. Why? Because we used this cell reference which is not really 16.67 percent it's really um, one-sixth so that keep that in mind. Alright so we're gonna do that same thing well now let's bring our balances down here so we in cash we had uh, 182.5 we increased it by 40 let's do the calculation equals 182.5 plus 450,000 gives us 632.5. Do the same thing for inventory. We're gonna say inventory was at 530 minus the 530, but in Excel, it's gonna be a plus because this is a negative number. So it's plus a negative 530. That'll make it go down to zero. If that's confusing, just, just realize that if you did it the wrong way, if we said 530 minus 530, and it came out to that, that doesn't make sense. And obviously what happened is we went the wrong way. We doubled the 530 and we want to do a subtraction problem. So we realize, oh, that means that delete equals this plus this because this is a negative number. So it's plus a negative number means it goes down to zero. Nothing happened to accounts payable. So we'll just bring that balance down. I'm just going to say, and notice I'm starting to hit plus instead of equals. It's, it's going to be the same thing. If you start with a, a plus, it's going to Excel knows it's a function. I'm going to point to this uh, 240,000. Then I'm going to select tab and tab over. Then I'll do the same thing here. I could hit plus or equals. I'll hit equals this time. Equals the beginning balance for K, which is 93,000 in K's capital account. And once again, I'm going to say plus this negative number so it's going to reduce the capital account like so we're going to do the same thing here for c we're going to say this equals the 2125 beginning capital number plus this negative number 26667 brings the balance down to 185 833 one more time for m we're going to say this equals point to the 167 plus this negative number which will bring the balance down to 153.667. Now we're going to do the same thought process, but now do it in terms of the trial balance and the general ledger. Some people really like to see it in terms of a table such as this. Some people such as myself would rather kind of see it in a trial balance because I, we've, I've worked a lot more with the trial balance format and we can see that the uh, what accounts will go down as we post them. So if we think about this in terms of a journal entry, we can think, well, what's happening here? We're selling the inventory for cash. So we can ask our questions, is cash affected? Yeah, cash is affected. We're getting cash for the sale of the inventory. Cash has a debit balance. We need to make it go up. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it as what it is. That's a debit. Therefore, we're going to debit it because that's the same thing to it. So I'm going to copy that cash. We're going to put that in cell J25, right click and paste it one, two, three. So there is the cash and the cash we received is the 450. So we're going to say the 450 will be the debit for 50,000 and enter. Then the credit will be going to one, one credit will be going to inventory. Inventory here is what we sold. It's on the books for 530,000. We sold all of it. Needs to go down to zero. How do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it as what it is. That's a debit. Therefore, we're going to credit it because that's the opposite thing to it. And we want to make it go down and doing the opposite is how to do so. 
So we're gonna copy that, gonna put this over here in J26, right click, paste, one, two, three, and the credit will be for then the amount that is in there of a negative for the credit, 530,000.